Hi, I'm Laura Nickerson, and today we're buzzing about the Lost Virginus Creek Restoration Project Phase 2. The Lost Virginus Creek is in major need of a makeover. It's been overrun by invasive plants and trees, and it's hurting our local ecosystem. Luckily, help is on the way. Dan Cooper of Cooper Ecological is doing the bird surveys and looking out for our native animals. Well, basically, the restoration is going to be removing a lot of non-native vegetation, like palm trees and eucalyptus trees, and we're really hoping that that will open up the landscape for native trees to come in, which will be used by native wildlife a lot more. John Fleming is from the Tree Removal Company, who has an 80-foot crane to cut down trees from the top down. So most people don't think of cutting down trees as helping the environment. Why are you doing that? We're involved in the restoration of the Lost Virginus Creek. One of the efforts which is ongoing here is to try to return the environment to its natural state as opposed to something that's being dominated by non-native or exotic species. So right now we're standing in a grove of, uh, of eucalyptus trees which are indigenous to the Antipodes. I think they were put here by an old business that used to be a nursery up and down Lost Virginus uh, Road here. I don't know why they were put in here, but they are invasive and they're exotic. And while they're still standing here, what they do is they prevent the native species, such as the uh, sycamores and oaks and walnuts, from gaining a foothold here. So in order to return it to its natural beauty, these eucalyptus trees need to be removed, and that's what we're doing at the moment. So describe phase two of the restoration project. Phase two is a continuation of the phase one, which was completed in 2008 next to the Albertson Shopping Center on the creek bed. In phase two, we are going to establish two trails along the creek from Agura Road all the way to the Anza Park. We are going to restore the banks. We are going to remove all the invasive trees and species that exist in the creek bed. Just like what we are seeing here, there are dead trees that we have to remove them. And then we will, after removing all those trees, we are going to plant 900 native trees throughout the, the project site. So the banks will be stabilized and the, all the erosions will be fixed and we are going to have a beautiful creek for people to walk along and enjoy. The 1977 version of the creek looked like this, sealed in by concrete to drain the water efficiently. But by 2007, the city realized the damage that was being done to the natural habitat that once was. And in 2008, phase one of the restoration began. They went from a concrete corridor to lush greenery and flowing water. Now, in 2016, phase two is ready to begin. What we have to do is uh, taking as much care and protective measures as possible. We have to fell these trees in as efficient a way as possible in order to clear it and get rid of their stumps and roots so that the flora can be put back here to make it a more natural environment. Is it going to be completely leveled in this area or are there a fair amount of trees that you're going to leave? We're leaving all of the indigenous trees. The indigenous poplars, the oaks, the sycamores, they're all staying. Uh, anything that's exotic, and in this particular area, it's mostly these eucalyptus trees. Uh, those are what are going, but they're going to be replaced by something which hopefully will enhance the, uh, the landscape in the future, but it's not going to be left naked. So then what happens to the trees after they've been cut down? Wood chips, Creekside uh, Clubhouse School, uh, which had suffered some uh, fire damage and uh, they needed some chips and there, there are various churches around here, some in Thousand Oaks, some in uh, West Lake Village and some in Calabasas, which all need chips. So wherever we can, we donate these things as a, as a, as a way of repurposing and as a, as a way of saying thank you to the people who uh, allow us to do our work. You've been conducting a bird survey. How on earth do you count birds? Well, the survey really involves looking for nests. And so part of the challenge is it's even harder than counting birds. It's trying to find nests. So. Um, I just kind of walk quietly and I observe the behavior of birds, see where they're going, see if they're carrying food or nesting material, and just wait. And really the birds will just show me where their nest is. Because of uh, the trees that didn't belong to this area, the, most of the uh, native uh, species and birds moved out of the area and they cannot nest in, in a non-native uh, uh, tree. So we are hoping that all those birds and the species will come back and will we will enjoy their, their songs and the, the birds singing for us, so that's, that's our hope. The idea is that little by little, the natives will start dominating over the non-natives in this corridor. And it's already being used by a lot of native species, but we're hoping that things like, you know, yellow warblers will have more nesting opportunities, hairy woodpeckers, 
will come in and use some of the uh, nesting cavities. So, I mean, I would say, you know, next spring, we should start seeing a lot of things nesting in places where there once was, say, a palm tree. Well, welcome back our smallest Calabasas residents. Speaking of the residents, what kind of benefits are they going to get out of this restoration? Just like in phase one, when you have an improved trail, when you have an improved backyard behind your condos, behind your house or behind your property, this will uh, enhance the value of your property. So we are hoping that any improvement to the creek will benefit the residents and our businesses. And by having a trail, you don't have to use your car. Most of the residents along the creek can just bike or walk to the shopping center instead of driving to the shopping center. When you find a nest, you've got to see what stage it's in. Are they building it? Do they have young? Are they sitting on eggs? And for these restoration projects, there's actually a federal law that requires us to make sure that there's enough of a buffer around the nest that it won't be disturbed by any activity. So the birds are safe during the course of this restoration, uh, but what about the turtles? Yeah, there are a lot of wildlife species that are using this, um, this creek here, and one of them is a protected turtle called the western pond turtle. And so the idea is that we're going to look for western pond turtles as well as nesting birds. And if we find any, then we will fence off a section of the creek and make sure that the workers stay uh, well away from any pond turtles. So where did you get the funding for this project? The main funding came from four different grants. The city of Calabasas participated as a local match. City Council approved a limited budget. That budget was spent on design, environmental documentation, and all the permitting process. And we received four different grants from the California Department of Water Resources, Department of Natural Resources, and also from Urban Stream and uh, Conservancy, Mountain, Santa Monica Mountain Conservancy. So the total grant that we are receiving, and we are still in process of securing those grants, is going to be $2.7 million. And we think that this grant is going to cover the cost of the project. Well, this is an incredible project that's sure to make Calabasas even more beautiful than it already is. If you want more information, you can visit cityofcalabasas.com. I'm Laura Nickerson, and I'll be buzzing about more local businesses and services soon. Bye-bye.